are feeling the rumble. We are seeing 33 out of 33 Raptor engines ignited on the super heavy booster. Continuing to get good call outs. Our trajectory looking nominal, systems looking nominal. Just amazing to see all 33 lit up once again. Supersonic, so we're now moving faster than the speed of sound. Getting those onboard views from the ship cameras. Now the, me the next major milestone is going to be a hot staging maneuver. Again, we're going to be doing that in just about 90 seconds. To do that, we're going to shut down all of the three center Raptor engines on Super Heavy. That'll be our Miko, our most engines cut off. And the clamps holding the two stages together are going to release. Starship second stage will ignite its engines, the RVAX first, the sea levels right after that. The sea level engines will be displayed or just kind of pointed out at about a 15 degree angle. So if you look close and we get good tracking, you might be able to see those center right after. So those six engines will push Starship off of the booster. Starship is on uh, is good. Now Starship's second stage is still firing its engines and as you heard following planned flight path uh, the ship objectives we're looking for hot staging again cruised right through that. We're looking to demonstrate controlled ascent as well as orbital insertion. 
Now the bottom right hand corner of the screen shows the ship uh, engine graphics, so be sure to keep an eye on those. Yep, yeah, Kate, like this is just a, a phenomenal test so far. Super Heavy is performing beautifully today. It's on its return leg of the journey. Ship continuing to burn its six engines, those larger circles, the Raptor vacuum engines, the inner circles, the uh, Raptor sea level engines. We're ab about 30 seconds away. Uh, oh, just under 30 seconds oh, away. The start of the boost back burn. Uh, excuse me, the landing burn on the booster. You can see the grid fins rotating. Those hypersonic grid fins are guiding us through the atmosphere back towards our splashdown site. Again, we're going for a hard uh, for a splashdown, a soft splashdown. So for landing burn, we're going to expect to see the 13 center engines light rapidly bring down the booster's velocity, and then just the three in the center for splashdown. Let's see if that'll work. We're getting a few, a few engines. And acquisition of signal. Let's see if we can get some other video of that. Now, uh, this is a test objective today. It is still something that we're attempting to learn. Um, and to make it that far to demonstrate the controlled re-entry up to that point is pretty darn good. Ship continuing to look nominal with its ascent burn. This burn lasting uh, about six minutes total. And we're expecting that this burn will end uh, just after T plus eight minutes, about a minute from now. So far, though, I mean, congrats to the team. Making it this far is farther than, we, than we've gone Absolutely. on flight two. Just wonderful views and great engine performance from the vehicles. Well behind it. Um, there's some of those great views from, uh, from Starlink giving us uh, views of Starship's onboard videos. And so we're hoping that the Starlink on board will let us, just like we're seeing these videos now, see through that plasma field by maintaining a continuous communication lock with the satellites on orbit through the wake that Starship leaves behind. Now, this is only the second time that we're testing Starlink during re-entry. So even though we do have these great visuals now, uh, don't be surprised if we manage to get some signal hiccups through. We're still learning about what that wake will actually look like in practice and whether we're able to get that live continuous high speed data during reentry. Yeah, that's right. And one of the really primary reasons we want to use Starlink is to just gather as much data as possible. It's been said the data is the payload on one of these flights uh, where we're just we're putting this flight hardware in a real flight environment, trying to learn about it as much as possible. Uh, Re-entry is going to be a really critical phase of flight. Uh, we really want to know how the ship's going to perform, especially that heat shield as we're going through the hypersonic re-entry. So if something were to go wrong during this re-entry, we want as many paths as possible to collect that information, that data, just to, again, just continually feed back uh, into star the Starship program to make each flight more reliable, more successful. Acquisition single, Mauritius. Now, if Starship manages to make it all the way through re-entry, we'll collect valuable data on Starship flying through the Earth's atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, meaning uh, more than five, or at this point, will be more than five times the speed of sound. Now we're watching these live views, uh, HD views by the looks of it, thanks to Starlink. Uh, you can see that the flaps there on the ship might be actuating. Um, certainly some incredible uh, visions of planet Earth behind Starship. Now, uh, we've already validated Starship's ability to fly uh, and land at subsonic speeds. You might recall those suborbital flights from a few years ago, and we can see those flaps there. 
So getting data on aspects like heating and control while traveling way faster than we did before is going to be critical to eventually bringing Starships back from space for rapid reuse. So I mentioned those flaps. That's one of the things um, that that enables Starship to help control itself and 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 survive the heat of reentry. Which, like we said before, we're expecting that reentry to occur around T plus 49 minutes. Uh, so we're uh, getting pretty close here. And what you're seeing here, it looks like the vehicle is sort of moving back and forth. Part of what you're also seeing is one of the cameras, this onboard view that we have, is on the end of a flap. Starship has front flaps and, and rear flaps in the vehicle. Um, so we've got four of those. And oh man, we can see the heating on those flaps as we're starting to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. This is where the Earth's atmosphere is doing the work to slow us down. And like we said, this plasma field wow. is wow, what a view. We hope to maintain these views throughout so big that we're hoping that the plasma field doesn't entirely blanket the entire vehicle. Right now, it is not. The Starlinks are is still. To you by Starlink. Yeah, the Starlinks <laughs> are still communicating and still uh, capturing the data and the video that we see here. I mean, Shiva, this is just absolutely incredible views. We've never seen anything like this before. This is the the biggest flying object ever in space. <laughs> absolutely, Kay. And and it's important to note with the ascent burn that we did was to get us to orbital velocities, even though we were on a nearly orbital trajectory. So the heating and the loads that Starship is going through right now, what it would be getting if it were recovering from the orbital mission. And I just imagine we have used to Again, this is the furthest and fastest that Starship has ever been. And you can definitely tell by the, uh, the crowd here in Hawthorne. The heat chill tiles doing their work. We talked about it earlier. Uh, up to 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit that those heat chill tiles are dissipating as we are re-entering. Yeah, now this was one of the critical, or uh, rather the key uh, mission objectives that we were hoping to hit today. Uh, we have never, like I said before, this is the fastest and furthest the Starship has ever flown. So this is the first time that we're getting to collect this re-entry data and understand how these 18,000 hexagonal feature tiles are working together to protect the belly of Starship as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, once again, the, the atmosphere is doing us a bit favorable.